whenever you sort of tell someone I'm doing a geography degree, they sort of look at you and they're like, babe, what are you actually going to do with that in the future? Lectures in it were all right. Some of them, you don't care about volcanoes. You want to learn about Brexit. Hey everyone and welcome to today's video. So today the video is going to be all about my geography degree. I have been waiting to film this video for an entire year because I wanted to do the whole year and make sure that I can fully inform you about what I think about geography. I asked on Instagram for your questions all about geography and you guys did not disappoint. Um, you guys are just very interested in what I study and a lot of you want to study it yourselves or are studying it. But this video is going to be for prospective geography students or even if you just want to consider it as a degree you may not be set on it yet if you know you're doing it and you're starting in september and also people who are already doing it and just want to hear my perspective on it geography degrees vary by university this is just my experience at the university of nottingham but a lot of geography degrees have the same sort of structure so even if you're looking at different geography degrees this might be helpful anyway if you'd like to get involved in future q a's then don't hesitate to follow my instagram which is mega x mahoney and my tiktok where i do day in the lives of my degree so you'll see what sort of lectures i'm doing day to day what i do when i'm not studying so first of all i'm going to talk about the actual logistics of my degree so what exactly do i study if you want to know you know the nitty gritty so i do the ba geography degree at the university of nottingham i believe it is the L700 when you apply for it on UCAS and what a BA means is it's a Bachelor of Arts so for geography it is a sort of multidisciplinary degree geography you learn a bit of economics politics about the environment about chemistry biology it combines so much stuff and a lot of universities differ it by doing BA and BSc degrees. So BA, you might focus a bit more on social, historical, political geography, whereas BSc, you'll be doing more of the sciencey stuff. So you'll be doing a little bit more about climate change, a little bit more about natural disasters, about rivers, rocks, that sort of thing. But geography is unique in the fact, well, actually a lot of universities do this, that in the first year you do a combined of BA and BSc so they introduce you to all of the different disciplines and then in your second and third year you can be a little bit more selective and then in the end you basically classify your degree based on how many of each modules you do but the best thing about the BA geography and the BSc geography at Nottingham is that if you want you can do a straight down the middle split so you don't have to exactly decide apparently it doesn't really matter employability wise it doesn't matter as long as you've got your geography degree so yeah that is just if you're looking at a geography degree make sure you look at the BA BSc thing and how many of each modules you're allowed to take so uh, going along from that someone said is the NOTS degree flexible and I'd say it is relatively flexible I mean in your first year you have to do the standard modules but then you also get to pick two modules they may not even have to be geography modules if you want to take a language you can do a language if you want to take one out of school you can do that like you can really just tailor it to your own which is what i really like so yes the geography degree is really flexible and the contact hours so obviously with my year it was so messed up with online lectures i literally only had four in-person lectures last year and three in-person seminars. That was all that was on offer, which was a real shame and didn't really feel like value for money, if I'm being honest, but that was just the nature of last year. Them four lectures were a blessing. This year, things are more in-person. So I'd say that in my first year, I had about 13 contact hours, which is about average for a geography degree. You want as many contact hours as you can get. And I think it's really important when you look at universities to see what their contact hours are and what the actual contact hours are going to give you. On average each day, I have a lecture or two and some of them last an hour, some of them last two hours. That may seem really low because obviously when you're at school, you all sit form, you have 20 plus contact hours a week and you know, you always feel like you're in lessons. But at uni, it is just a little bit lower just is how things are. Contact hours for geography, they aren't as much as other degrees, but I feel like the contact hours that I have had have been quite rich in knowledge and quite useful. So now I'm going to talk about the different modules that you do and this is just the Nottingham perspective. Other universities vary by modules so definitely check that out. If it's a research-led university then lecturers there are going to teach based on their own research which completely varies and most Russell Group unis are research-led whereas other universities just sort of teach more about broad geography topics is what I sort of discovered anyway while I was looking at universities. I quite like the research-led 
I approach because then that means that you're being taught really current information, you're being taught stuff that the lecturers are so passionate about. Split into exploring human geography and earth and environmental dynamics. So exploring was the human stuff, EED was the physical. That was your main big modules. You did them throughout the year and every couple of weeks they'd switch up the lecturer and then they teach you about their specialities. So for the human side of things, I've got my laptop here with all of my folders so I can tell you what modules I did. So for human, we did agriculture, food, we did political geography, rural geography, historical geography, development, health, environmental and cultural. So those were the eight different sort of subtopics I had throughout the year with human geography. I really enjoyed them. My favourite ones of them were definitely political, historical, development, environmental. I'd say those four were my favourite. And then in EED, which was the physical, I did atmosphere, hydrology, oceanography, geomorphology, biosphere, environmental change and earth observation. The ones that I enjoyed most out of them were probably atmosphere because that was all about the science behind carbon dioxide and climate change emissions. I also liked environmental change and earth observation. I had my tutorial which was a once a week meeting with a tutor um, who was just an academic in the geography department and you'd also have that meeting with I think six others um, in your tutor group. I had one of them in person and all the rest were online. But do you know what? That one in person was quite nice because at least I got to see their faces. Did an optional module. So you could choose from human or physical geography or you could do a language. So I should have done a language. But I'm also just rubbish at learning languages. I didn't even do GCSE language. I picked exploring place and some of the lectures in it were all right some of them when it's online it was on a friday morning then we did igd throughout the year which was interpreting geographical data so that is the employable bit of geography where you know you're manipulating data you're using excel you're using spss software you know you're actually you know physically doing stuff on a laptop and it was quite hard and there was a lot of group work in it but thankfully i have a very clever boyfriend who does geography as well and he was an absolute blessing he really helped me out there and then gis in our second semester which is like geographical information systems so that's all to do with maps but not traditional maps as in like the world atlas to do with arc gis and online maps and i loved that at the beginning i found it really hard and didn't enjoy it but towards the end when i did my coursework i loved it got a first in that piece of coursework too i think it's a great school to have again a really employable one as well then we also did globalization well i did globalization that was my optional module for semester two loved that one it just built on all the a-level globalization stuff loved it it was so good and it was so poignant at the time because we've gone through brexit covid trump as a president boris as prime minister There's so much globally going on that i really enjoyed globalization then we had field work which as in the name was meant to be a trip to i think the peak district i can't actually remember it was meant to be a great bonding experience a free holiday well i'm obviously paying nine thousand two hundred fifty pounds but obviously it didn't go ahead because of covid that was expected that's fine but then we were still expected to do the module online i saw a lot of tiktoks of a lot of geography students doing virtual trips field work is a necessary component of geography it's important to the discipline but when you physically can't do it and you're made to do it online it's just a bit rubbish. They tried the best they could, bless them. There are lots of fieldwork opportunities for a geography degree and definitely while well, you're looking at universities, see where they go on their fieldwork trips. So I know that in future years, there's the opportunity to go to Mexico, to go to Berlin. There's lots of unis do different amazing trips. So just have a look at what they offer. I say like, challenges to do with the degree were more about it being online than it was the actual degree itself. I mean, there were some challenging bits. Don't get me wrong, geography is not an easy degree, especially the bits that were more technical and more practical They're a lot more difficult just because it's something that you may not have come across before but i quite enjoyed the challenge of it i'm going to talk about how you get assessed but first of all you do coursework so you might have an essay you might have a project to do you do presentations which are graded and they can be on your own or they could be in groups you also have exams mine were online which was basically just 48 hour coursework so i had 48 hours to write a 1000 word essay which do you know what is quite manageable the actual 
workload I say is quite similar to A-level. I'd say the amount of work you do is probably quite similar. But then with A-level, it was always very, oh, you had to do something for the next day or, you know, the next week. Whereas with uni, what I found so far, you find out your deadline so far in advance, even two months in advance, and you have all that time to work towards it. So you can balance your workload a lot better and you have these massive long holidays. Your workload is sort of balanced or it is in first year anyway. I did have three deadlines on one day in May but I'd been working towards them since March, so it was fine. I'd say don't bring your geography notes from A-level to uni. That is no point. You are not allowed to use them in your essays. And also the first year of university is trying to get everyone up to the same speed because everyone's done different A-level geography courses or may not have even done A-level geography at all. And that's completely okay. You're allowed to join the degree. It's so multidisciplinary that no matter what A-levels you did, they'll somehow help you with geography. Now I'm going to talk about year abroad, semester abroad, placement everything that a geography degree can offer you alongside the actual course. So a lot of universities do a year abroad where you can study in a different country for an entire year, which does sound really fun. They also do a semester abroad, so you can spend from September until January in a different country. They also do a year in industry, which is where you can spend an entire year with a company, basically just working and not studying, just to sort of get your foot on the career ladder. And they also do placements, which are either during the summer or during Easter or one day a week placements during term where again you just work with the company get something on your CV there is so many opportunities for geography to not just be the three-year course you can expand it you can do something else personally didn't go for a year abroad or a semester abroad because a I'm very happy in Nottingham B I'm quite a home gal I like being in the UK and I love a good holiday but for me I want to get my three years done I want to go get a job I didn't think a year abroad or a semester abroad would be very helpful to me. It sounds so fun. I can see why people want to, but just for me, it wasn't a vibe. Also, it literally got cancelled for our year group, the semester abroad. No one's going on a semester abroad. Then I just want to talk about how to find a geography course for you, because obviously I'm such an advocate for the Nottingham one. I love it here. You know, I couldn't imagine doing another degree. Nottingham has been perfect for me to study geography. But definitely when you're looking for a geography degree, look at what the different professors actually study and what their research, research is about. And if that sort of aligns with what you want to learn about at university. Otherwise, you might be stuck at a university where all the professors are so interested in volcanoes and you don't care about volcanoes, you want to learn about Brexit. Just look at abstracts of the papers, you can find their LinkedIn or you can just find them on different university websites and see what research they've published, give it a read. I mean some of it will sound like absolute jargon like you won't understand it but just to get a vibe. And I've got asked a lot of questions about the future because whenever you sort of tell someone I'm doing a geography degree they sort of look at you and they're like babe what are you actually going to do with that in the future isn't it all just coloring in no my friends it is not someone said do you think geography as a degree is too diverse and general to obtain employment afterwards which is something that i have questioned a lot some could say jack of all trades master of none but i personally think no you learn so many transferable skills that whatever job you have it'll be so useful yes, it is general and it is diverse but that is the point of it if you want to go down a straight career path do medicine and become a doctor do law and become a lawyer. Geography, it doesn't have that unless you become a geography teacher. You learn data analysis, you learn how to use different programs, you learn about how the world works scientifically, you learn about the people in the world, you learn about where the world was and its future. If you are someone who has just a lot of interests and can never narrow it down and was always that person at school who loved all of their subjects and found it really hard to pick GCSEs or A-levels, then I think geography is a great degree for you. Someone asked as well, what employment opportunities are there? What can you do of it in the future? What are your ambitions? Surprisingly, which I didn't really know until I came to university, a lot of geography graduates go into finance because you can do economic geography at Nottingham they do geographies of money and finance so geography is quite a respected degree you can go into the environmental sector which is obviously growing by the day we have a massive climate emergency on our hands they need people to solve it data analysis is a big skill you learn as a geographer and you can use that in so many sectors my personal views on what I want to do when I grow up um which is scarily coming closer I don't know I as I said I love loads of things I'm really interested in sustainability and fashion you know possibly could work in the media industry who knows also along with that social media and marketing so the civil service fast track scheme is something that a lot of geographers go into and a lot of like BA 
graduates from Russell Group universities. Like it is just a common thing for people to go into the civil service. My town is going through a massive regeneration over the next 30 years and to be involved in that would be super cool. So if I didn't answer your question, honestly, leave them below in the comments or send me a DM. I would happily talk about geography for ages. If you wanna follow me on my geography journey, just subscribe to the channel. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. Have a lovely day. Bye.